he claimed the imperial ranks to Grand Admiral. So how exactly did Fraun rise in power? The Can Chrysanthemum presents Star Wars Lore Episode 88, The Rise of Grand Admiral Fraun. Mithron Nurodo was born on Casilla, nearing the end of the Galactic Republic. Lichis, his species, controlled the area of space called the Unknown Regions. After joining Lichis Expansionary Defence Force, he and his brother, Mithra Safis, became Meta Adoptives in the Chiss Society's 8th ruling family. A Meta Adoptive was just a Chiss who was adopted by one of the most powerful families in their society. Mithrodu Rodo, with the help of his adoptive family, soon became a commander. This impressed his adoptive family so much that they considered making him a permanent member of the family. Mithron Nurodo shorted his name to Fron, thank God, which was the middle part of his name, and took his new role very well. He was rather ruthless in his methods, which contradicted the Chess Society ways, but as a commander, Fron used the Springhawk, a combat cruiser for the Chess Expansionary Defence Fleet. On one mission in 27 BBY, where he managed to emerge victorious and suffer no casualties even though his fleet was outnumbered, Fraud was introduced to Darth Sidious via the Sith Lord's advisor, Kinman Doriana. The fleet he destroyed was actually Sidious's private task force, but surprisingly, he was not mad. Fraud impressed Sidious so much that the two worked together soon after. The two's agreement to join forces was well and truly sealed after they destroyed the Republic exploration ship, the outbound flight, which killed many Jedi. The destruction of outbound flight always hung over Fraun. His brother died as a result of it, and the ruling families were not best pleased by his actions. Because of this, they kept a close eye on him, but Palpatine was very impressed by the commander and contacted the Chiss a couple of times over the years to try and secure his services. Fraun wanted to work for Palpatine, but he didn't want to turn his back on the expansionary defence force at the same time. He came up with a plan to fall out of favour with the Chiss, so they had to kick him out of the force, and he could permanently join the Sith Lord. Front started using extreme methods whilst commanding, and his plan worked. The commander was seen as acting in a way which was against everything his people believed in. He was taken to, I guess a Star Wars court, and was deemed guilty. Frontline had his rank taken away from him, and was exiled to a planet in the Unknown Regions. It was a tough life living in isolation, but he was able to escape in 19 BBY. This came about when the Victory Class Star Destroyer, the Strike Fast, was in pursuit of the smuggler, Booster Tenek. The smuggler chose to hide on the same planet Fron was located. The former commander cleverly made his way onto the Strike Fast undetected and attempted to steal a Kappa Class shuttle in order to get back to his people. Unfortunately, he was caught before he could escape. Fraud surrendered without action. He was recognised as having clear talent, which would be useful in the Imperial ranks, so Fraud was offered and accepted a place in the Galactic Empire. When he was presented to Emperor Palpatine, the Sith Lord became very happy at the thought of working with Fraud again. The new recruit was given private training at Caridas's Imperial Academy. Although he quickly rose through the Imperial ranks, he constantly had to prove himself to the others as he was one of the very few non-human officers in the Imperial Navy. <coughs> Fraun chose not to spend most of his time around the Core Worlds, instead he tried his best to explore the Unknown Regions. He created a network of alliances with colonies in the area as he believed a unified force was needed to deflect threats, especially the Far Outsiders, who threatened the Chiss. Fron called it the Empire of the Hand, but it was still a faction of the Galactic Empire. However, the Empire never really knew of its existence. 
and combined imperial and chess policies which allowed non-humans to enter military service. We already know Fromm was pretty great at what he did, but he achieved more promotions and victories in way less time than any of our officers. When he reached the rank of captain, he was placed in command of the Imperial class Star Destroyer Vengeance, overseen by Jeric. Fromm was one of ten Imperial officers called to the Emperor's throne room in Coruscant's Imperial Palace around two weeks after the Battle of Yavin. Palpatine told them that the Death Star had been destroyed and that Darth Vader was on his way to their location. Fromm wanted to immediately attack the rebel base, but the Emperor preferred to be patient. Before the meeting ended, Palpatine ordered his men to investigate the rebel attack and who the key members of the Alliance were, so they could be eliminated. This would hopefully destroy the rebellion from within. Not long after, he held the title of Senior Captain and later became a Grand Admiral. Although he had a small ceremony on Coruscant for it, his promotion was kept a secret because Palpatine declared there could only be 12 Grand Admirals at any one time. Because of this, the vast majority never fully realised his real importance to the Empire. Fromm continued to work in the Unknown Regions and he managed to set up many Imperial bases and colonies throughout the area. Sometime afterwards, the Emperor invited Fromm to join the Order of the Canted Circle. To capitalise on the Empire's victory on Hoth, Fromm partook in a mission to destroy a Rebel Alliance space station. It was a success. After his display in the Navi Crisis, the Emperor officially made him a Grand Admiral. He replaced Demetrius Zarin. The Grand Admiral was in the Unknown Regions during the Battle of Endor, meaning he wasn't killed as a result, unlike Sidious and Vader. This saw the Galactic Empire breakdown and there was a struggle for power. Fromm kept a low profile but re-emerged in 8 ABY to salvage the battered empire. He assumed control of the Imperial military and tried to unify the separated empire factions. Fromm later began to execute his grand strategy to defeat the New Republic and, once more, have the empire rule the galaxy. He had prepared for this for five years beforehand, so during his time away. He was able to bring the Empire to near the same levels as it was before and deal many blows to the New Republic. However, he never got to see his plans through as he was killed in the Battle of Bilbringi. Rook stabbed him through the chest from behind after realising Fron had betrayed his people. This left the future of the Empire uncertain once more. Now it's time for this week's question. Should Fron be part of the Star Wars canon? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn more about Fron, including his legacy and military tactics, click the link on screen or the one in the description. That video will be out tomorrow if you're watching this live. Remember to vote for next week's episode by liking one of the free comments below. And for more Star Wars lore, keep it locked here to the Kagusa. Kylo Ren is the new main bad guy in the upcoming 7th Star Wars film and looks like the love child of Darth Raven and Vader.